Come join us in Texas. I love, love, love this finish, and I call it the tortoiseshell finish. It is so simple that you guys are gonna almost wanna overwork it. This is a pro tip. Because wood is expensive, we wanna try to get as much use out of a sample board as possible. All right, so you could see I've used this sample board several times. All right, I usually do two pours on each side. What I'll do is I'll just sand it with 220, I'll clean it with isopropyl, I'll repaint it with our base paint, and then I'll pour it again. So don't think because you only use a board one time that it's done. Now the little boards that we're using, unfortunately you can't flip those over because the backside's textured, but you can pour more than one finish on the front side, okay? So yeah, so be thrifty and use it over and over. All right, so what we're doing, I'm just taking my clear and I'm gonna split it up. So I've got most of my epoxy, I'm gonna tint a brown opaque. Now this is the brown opaque from Alumalite. What I really love about this tint, you can actually make it very, very, very transparent by adding a tiny little piece or little drip. Did you see how little I added? So look how transparent that is. Isn't that beautiful? So for this particular piece though, I really want to get an opaque. All right, so that's our brown. Then I'm gonna come in with our Alumalite black. When you look at the surface of this, you're not gonna be able to really differentiate between the black and the brown until you put another color over the top of it because that color is gonna react differently to a black than it is to a brown. Then we're gonna come in with dark bronze mica powder. Okay, this is the first time we've introduced mica powder. So our mica powders that we use are a makeup grade mica powder. Okay, they're not full of fillers. They're not full of talc. They're very, very, very pure. This is dark bronze and I'm gonna add to a very small cup. So you can see how little I'm gonna use on this finish. And actually I probably won't even use all of this. We're doing three ounces per square foot. Again, the reason we do three ounces is because it's gonna self level out to about an eighth of an inch. If we use more than three ounces per square foot, we're gonna do what? Right, it's gonna roll off, so we're gonna tape our edges so it doesn't roll off. All right, so look at that color. Is that not gorgeous? So that's our dark bronze. Now I'm fixing to blow y'all's mind. The chamomile, chamomile. Chameleon. <laughs> I have the chamomile tea on my head, yes. Yeah, and I do like to really load up on that uh, chameleon. We usually, we, we want to try to keep our additives at 10% or below by volume because we don't want to really in, uh, mess up the integrity of our epoxy. We get too much additives, we're going to start messing with the cure rates and how hard our product's going to get if we start adding too many products, okay? But I do like to push the that? limit. Is that a mica this is a mica powder as well. Now, with this mica powder, anybody know what a chameleon is? It changes colors. So this, it looks red, pinky one way, and then it has a little bit of a color shift of green. Then we're gonna come in with olive green. It is beautiful. Again, this is a mica powder. Now, if I were doing this in a really large container, I would actually make a slurry prior to adding our mica into our epoxy by either using our thin dispersion or I would use 91% isopropyl alcohol. I would make a paste, almost like a, a, like when you cook, you make like a roux, they call that a roux, yeah. So I would do that so that then when I add it to my epoxy, it blends so much easier. But I'm mix mixing such a small amount, I'm able to really make sure that everything's stirred well, okay? Now I have a little bit extra clear epoxy in my cup. All I'm gonna do is come over here, kind of put down a grease coat. All right, so all we're doing is putting down a little bit of a grease coat because what? Can anybody tell me? Epoxy likes, epoxy likes to go and flow where epoxy has already been. So by putting this grease coat, it's going to make the next step that we do go very, very easily. All right, so now I'm going to come in with my 
brown opaque dye and very random. Now I tell you what else is also very, very pretty is if you add a little bit of gold dust to that brown, money. All right, so we got that down. We're gonna come in with our black. Our black, I'm just gonna start filling in a little bit on our negative space. Again, you're really not gonna be able to differentiate the two colors until we start adding other colors on top. All right, so I'm just gonna hit it a little bit with my heat. And I take a brush. Now you can use your brush. You can use a Bondo spreader. You can use a squeegee. You could use a roller. Okay, just about anything you wanna do. And all I'm gonna do is cross hatch this out and cover my surface. Now I don't want to mix it too much because then all I'm doing is creating one color. I'm just getting enough to cover my surface. All right, go through my edges, take that brush, watch your edges. And because we've rounded over our edges, it's gonna flow. So now we have two different colors in here. You really can't see it. But if you were to take a flashlight or take this over to the window, you would actually be able to see a little bit of a variance there. Okay, so we're gonna start off with our bronze. And this, you want to be very mindful, guys, of how much you put on here. Do not put a lot because this will take over very quickly. Remember how I said we're not gonna use it all? I, we're not gonna use it all. All right, now I'm gonna come in with a little bit of my chameleon, same thing. Now chameleon will definitely take over if you use too much and you want to use chameleons on a dark background. If you do chameleon on a light background, chances are you're really not gonna be able to see it, okay? This is our olive green. All right, walk away, it's done. No, <laughs> Take your brush and now we're gonna skip trial. And we're just, we're gonna just take that brush and barely let the weight of the brush drag over the surface. And we kind of cross hatch it, okay? I'm intentionally having that brown be a negative space. Meaning I want some of that solid brown to show through on my piece. And I'm not gonna hit every single one of these little lines. I'm gonna use that in my design. So I like to tilt. It helps me with getting that really pretty soft uh, pattern. If I can't tilt, if I'm doing it like an on-site pour, just heat it up a little bit and it's gonna move on its own, okay? I love that. We could walk away right here. We would put a flood coat on it tomorrow. We could install this. This would be a sick vanity in a bathroom. Unbelievable, okay? But we are gonna show you guys that you can take it to the next step. All right. So I'm gonna do a granification like we did on that piece earlier, all right? But I'm not gonna do it super opaque, all right? And I'm not gonna do it opaque in all the areas. So I'm gonna come over and in certain areas, I'm gonna spray paint, all right? But you still see that I have areas that you can see, okay? Now we've taken that same look and we've kind of muted it down a bit. So now we've taken something that's super bright and we've toned it down and now we can use it somewhere else that maybe we don't want something quite so vivid. I could definitely see it in a man cave, okay? It's not quite so pinky, but with this, it looks a little more masculine maybe a little bit, a little more like a rock. And you're seeing these colors. Now guys, you can do this technique with any color. You don't have to use the colors that I have. Blue. These, yes, blue would be beautiful. Blue earth would be beautiful and that's Mitch's very favorite. So you've just learned two finishes, guys. We're gonna do one more. So I'm gonna come back. Now let's say you're, you know, you're looking at this and you're like, man, this is really pretty. I love it. But I wanna bring back a little bit more of the color. All right, I'm gonna go back in again with my bronze. All we're doing, guys, is layering upon layering upon layering. That's all we're doing. I, and you know what? I'm not even gonna add that right now. I'm just gonna come back and because now I've got spray paint on the top, also I'm melding that in 
cross hatch, barely letting that touch. I'm bringing it back. And if you wanted to get a little, have, say let's have a little bit more of the bronze, you can do that. This is your piece. If you just want a little bit of that brown, I mean, a little bit of those uh, chameleon colors and that green to uh, peekaboo through, then you're just barely gonna touch it, all right? And I'm intentionally wanting to leave those brush strokes because those are gonna, as they meld out, are gonna be gorgeous. And you'll also notice when I do my heat, how fast I do it and how little heat I use. Heat takes your epoxy back to a more fluid state. And then what happens? It's like doing what? Herding cats? Right, when you make your epoxy super fluid, you lose control. I cannot make a design in water like I can in honey, okay? All right, so now I'm loving it. One of my favorite things to do now is to run my very thin veins. Now, if you'll notice, when I do this, guys, I start off the board and I end off the board and I go very quickly. I don't care that I'm skipping, that's okay. Now this is not like we were doing our soapstone. Our soapstone, we really wanted more of a, a true realistic vein. So I, would, I was doing more straight lines. This is an art look, okay? So I'm gonna do more of these veins and then I'm gonna come in with some clear. Now when you do veins with clear, it gives the most gorgeous, transparent look and it almost makes it look like your rock has been broken. All right, hit with a little bit of alcohol, okay. All right, now we're gonna come over it very lightly. Watch what it does to my veins, just like it did in our soapstone. I can move it if I want a little bit. When you tilt, you want everything to move slowly. If you tilt it too fast, your epoxy will move so fast you'll get these little fingers and you don't want that. You want it to everything to be super slow and you want it to just move enough to make it look natural. Now these veins look very distinct right now, but as time goes by, you're gonna see that these veins are going to soften. Now I'm just having fun and you have to know when to stop <laughs> and I don't. All right, so I'm gonna give you guys a pro tip. When you're practicing, Set your phone up, film this, and film your hands. So if my phone is right here, I'm talking to that phone as if I'm teaching someone. Because I'll even say, okay, uh, I'm gonna come in, and my phone's here. All right, so this is what I'm gonna spray. And it's been, oh, 15 minutes, and I'm gonna spray. Because I promise you, when you start getting excited about what you created, and you're gonna go recreate, you're gonna go, what I do? How long did I wait? What color did I use? I'm gonna let this kind of play. Okay, guys, listen up really quick. You've got four ounces of epoxy here. So you need to take all that I did, you need to split it from here. So remember, when I...